wrong? Why should, why should something be wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Sam, Sam found, found out. out. What's wrong? Why should something be wrong? What's wrong? Sam found out. These are the words we're about to say At the beginning of each play Which to my delight I am going to perform tonight The very same words but three different plays Proceeding from these words in three different ways What's wrong? Why should something be wrong? What's wrong? Sam found out First there's a play by Landford Wilson Then we'll change the scene And bring you a romance by Terence McNally And Wendy Wasserstein Next comes a musical by Kander and Ebb A team I've loved many a year My, what a swell elegant group I have here And three gorgeous leading men Louis Gossett Jr., Brian O'Neill, and John Rubenstein. What could be more divine? And for tonight, they're mine. Do you hear me? Mine, oh, mine. Here goes, we aim to please, and hope that good things come in threes. Stick around and see the way We all play triple play And in each of the plays We want you to wonder Who Sam will turn out to be Well, as they say Don't touch that dial You'll see, you'll see You'll see What's wrong? Sam found out. Liza Minnelli in Sam Found Out, a triple play. Brought to you by Mastercare Car Service with 1,500 locations. Finally, taking care of your car is no big deal. And Lipton Side Dishes. Lipton brings you a tradition of delicately seasoned taste in Lipton noodles and sauce and Lipton rice and sauce. Presenting the delicately seasoned taste of Lipton noodles and sauce Alfredo. Delicately prepared for you by Lipton. So delicious, so simple. Noodles and sauce Alfredo. One of the Lipton side dishes with that delicately seasoned taste. It's no big deal. It's a pain. No, no, Carrie. It's called Mastercare car service. Brakes, alignments, tune-ups. The work. It's no big deal. And a six-month or 6,000-mile warranty covers parts, labor, wherever they do Mastercare service. From Seattle to Schnecksville. Sounds right, this Mastercare. So right that fixing your car is no big deal. Finally, taking care of your car is no big deal. Mastercare car service by Firestone. I thought they just sold tires. Our plan is to get phones everywhere. Even here. Somewhere over the rainbow. The system is great. We can talk to computers anywhere. At AT&T, we've always been committed to helping the people of the world communicate better. Funny how the future seems to repeat itself. Yes, we can put all this knowledge into everybody's home or office at the push of a button. And the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Why should something be wrong? What's wrong? Sam found out. Sam found out what? 
Well, I was hoping that you could tell me. You know, he called. He said he and I should talk. I guess you haven't heard. Sam is uh, no longer a business partner of ours. There is nothing worse than a bent cop who's turned straight. Oh, you're joking. Sam upholding the law? <laughs> you're not going to talk to Sam. Listen, I don't like cops even when they're on the take. When did all this happen? It's been away longer than you know. Looking a little scattered. I think I was counting on you to pick up the pieces. Oh, sorry. I just remember hearing a little voice saying about three months ago, I'd never need you for anything again. You're looking good. Did you have something special in mind? What do you need? You didn't come to visit. As it happens, nobody came to visit. Well, my sister. Yeah? Yeah. She's found God. And like some of the people who have found God, she has no use for anyone else. After the second time, I asked her not to come back. What are you thinking? You always get your makeup smeared. I never knew another girl who did that. Sloppy Joe? The original Sloppy Joe, huh? Especially good buttons. Remember saying that? I never forget. It's one of my problems, of course. I always forget. I didn't forget you. Yeah. Hell with it. It's a big city. Girl's got to look after herself, right? That's the way I like you. Pretending you don't need me, I like that. Because you do it so badly. Listen, forget it. You don't need me, I didn't need you first, you know. <laughs> Where are you staying? A hotel. Well, it's not as if they'll keep your apartment. I was sick of everything I had anyway. Good riddance. Yeah. Let me see. You could do better. I could do worse. Believe me, I know. You could. You didn't exactly pick me out of the gutter. You know, I was doing all right. You were a mess. Emotionally. I was a mess. Financially, I was not in bad shape. Well, your money went up your nose. It's changed now, Bill. Really. I don't do that anymore. I thought the first thing they teach you in that place is that you're always a drug addict. I can't tell you the crap they told us we were. <laughs> Although I have some vague memory, it was you who got me started. No way, Sloppy Joe. I only give little girls what they want. I don't know how you do it, Billy. You always make me want to please you. That's where your talent lies, Joe. Pleasing people. Hey. Kids got talent. So why'd you want to see me? I did a lot of thinking, Bill, in that dump. Good for you. Well, honey, good and bad. Actually, what Sam said was... Did I know a friend of yours named Loretta? From St. Paul? I lied. Said I didn't know any of your friends. I'm not very good with names. Maybe you could describe her. That's easy. Loretta was everything I wanted to be and wasn't. The hair, the build, personality. Girl could even talk. Not really a sort, I wouldn't have thought. It doesn't sound like it, no. I guess she wasn't. Really, because what I, I started remembering was a, a boozy night. <laughs> she asked me over. We ordered out. She didn't cook for you? She wanted pizza. I wanted Chinese. We dished you to filth, of course. But I imagine we both loved you. So anyway, over, uh, uh who remembers? Cognac. She told me she was getting out. You're losing me, dog. Getting out of what? Getting out of your stable, Bill. She said she was leaving you. It was a, a what? A concept. I couldn't get a hold of leaving, Bill. You know, I think that's what gave me the courage to commit myself. The very thought that a, a hooker could so take... So she was a help to you, huh? She was 
my friend. You said. I did have some friends, not a lot, but some. Close friends. You know, for all my carping, John, I wasn't, wasn't really that bad. Pajama parties, playing hearts. Late night TV, well, till 11. And we had newspapers. So one morning I was feeling really good, you know, thinking I was damn near out of there. In fact, I was thinking about Loretta. Why hadn't she written? You know, maybe I'd call her. So when I walked into that foul day room and saw a picture on the cover of the post, Prosty beat to death, I believe it said. No clues, it said. Found in her apartment two weeks later. Neighbor shocked, police stymied. Anyway, I knew you'd done it. I think I, I knew before I saw the paper. I knew when I didn't hear from her. Still a little fogged. How you love? Fella, come on. I got a medical certificate that says I'm clear-eyed and ready for society. <laughs> First thing I thought is one of us girls is gonna rat on him. Felt a little sad about it, you know, you in jail. You know what I'm gonna say, don't you? Because I realized I didn't know any of your other girls except her. Not one. None of your girls know any of the other girls. See, I only met Loretta by accident. That was just chance. So there wasn't even anyone who was gonna know. Oh, you're good. The paper said you used a baseball bat. That bothered me a lot because I could just see you doing it. So that set me back a few weeks, you know, bad dreams and all that. You tell anybody about these dreams? Not even the shrink at that dump, and she would have loved it. You know something, Joe? There's a common denominator in all you girls. You're all paranoid. Tell me about it. With good reason, believe me. It's understandable. It's the business. Loretta was independent. Johns are mean. One of them got out of hand. No. It wasn't a John. We made a pact. We weren't going to do that anymore. It was you. She quit on you. Bill, you remember the time in the car? I got to cry and I said I couldn't take it anymore. I threatened to go home. It was all the booze talking. You beat me up. You wanted me to, love. Who knows? I was totally screwed up anyway. You drove us down in the rain. I remember because I walked home in it. Down a Canal Street. You slapped me around real good. You threw me out of the car and you beat me around some more. You left me there. You were back on the job soon enough. As soon as my bruises could be covered by makeup. And after that, you were very nice to me for a long time. You were nice to me, love. Yeah, I remember that night a lot, too. You tell the shrink about that one? Yeah, I told her everything, except one. That you loved it, too? No, I didn't tell her that when you got out of the car, you had a baseball bat in your hand. I didn't tell her that. You didn't have to kill her. I came around. She would have come around. You both made a pact, huh? Does that mean you're going to quit on me now, too? Oh, no, come on. That was months ago. I was strung out. I'm together now. Bill, what am I going to do, Type? Who the hell do you think would want you? Come on, honey, a little razzmatazz. Everybody You haven't me. looked at yourself lately, Joe. What did you do to your hair? You're as fat as a cow, Joe. You're old, love. No, don't do that, Bill. Come on, I'm in better sh shape now than I Look at you with that handkerchief. The minute I saw you, I knew you were back on the stuff. No! Some just to see you. I was afraid I was nervous. You wouldn't like me. Telling me you got your life in your hands now. You're you're a mess. Bill, please. Please, I won't be like that anymore. Please. Don't talk like this. We're gonna have to talk. I want to see you later. At your place. Uh, if you don't tell me I can come back, I won't be able to leave here. I'll run right into traffic. 
Do you think I care what happens to me if you don't want me anymore? I only told you about Loretta because I wanted to have something on you so you'd have to take me. I know what I look like. It's only because I was afraid. I was afraid you wouldn't want me anymore. Joe, look at me. You're hysterical. Tell me I can come back. Of course you can. You'll straighten up. Everything will be fine. Uh, what made you think I'd do something like that to Loretta? There are people who do that kind of thing for a living. No. Come on, love. We know each other better than that. You do it yourself. Why is that? Because you'd like it. We know each other pretty well. Yeah. Oh, you could have called somebody. You didn't have to leave her alone up there all that time. The suspense is half the fun, love. When will they find her? Will they recognize her? Did I leave any clues? Will anyone miss her? Want me to drop you off at your hotel now? Come on, you said you'd come over later. Let's go now. We need to talk. No, come on. I want to fix up for you. I, I want to take a bath, you know. Oh, it's so good to see you. I've missed you so much. Can we go out to eat like, like we used to? Sure. <laughs> Seven. Yeah. Bill. Got anything on you? Sorry, love can't help you. Against the law, Sloppy Joe. Come on. Come on. It's bad for you. Oh, no. It'll, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It's just so good to see you again, you know. You gonna be at the hotel at 7? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, I'll be gorgeous. <laughs> Got a lot to talk about, Sloppy Joe. Sam, did you get that, Sam? Sam, Sam, did you, did you get that all on tape? Don't worry, you won't get off the lot. Get this thing Please, you're under arrest. You're beautiful, honey. You'll need this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we might. Yeah. Shh, Cindy's sleeping in snuggly softness. Cause Cindy's mom knows only snuggle fabric softener gets everything soft as me. Soft enough for even Cindy. Dishwasher spots are driving butt away. <laughs> you need sunlight. It gets everything this spotless, even in sunlight. Sally, I'll never stray again. Sunlight for dishwashers. Nothing gets glasses more spotless. Guess who's back? Burger bundles from Burger King. Flame broiled mini cheeseburgers that taste so. Great. You can't put them down. Burger bundles from Burger King. We go above and beyond just like you. Above and beyond what we have to do. I'm a prudential representative. When I talk to people about CDs and mutual funds, they're surprised at the wide range of investment opportunities I can offer. You work hard, so do we, to make what you've worked for a reality. The Rock, the Prudential, above. Delicately seasoned taste of Lipton chicken rice and sauce. Delicately prepared for you by Lipton, with a rich chicken stock simmered inside. So delicious, so simple. Chicken flavor rice and sauce, one of the Lipton side dishes with that delicately seasoned taste. Friday. An inside look 
get David Bowie on stage from Sydney, Australia with his 87 World Tour. David Bowie's Glass Spider Concert, Friday. Liza Minnelli and Sam Found Out. A triple play will continue in a moment. Sunday, Mac makes his move. I expanded my horizons. And he'll be sizzling all summer long. It's all in the wrist. Catch MacGyver on his new night. <laughs> and Dennis Weaver. There hasn't been anything you couldn't do when we worked on it together. Except read and write. Facing his illiteracy, bluffing it, after MacGyver Sunday. There's a brand new meat market in your neighborhood. It's the first to sell both USDA Select and USDA Choice Beef exclusively. USDA Select, for those who prefer a lean, lower-calorie cut. USDA Choice, for those who insist on a steak that's juicy and well-marbled. True, some other stores sell USDA-graded beef, but nobody sells it for less. Because the new meat market in your neighborhood is lucky. Hello, I'm Paul Moyer. Coming up on Eyewitness News tonight, there is new concern about the AIDS threat to our nation's blood supplies. Crocodile Dundee takes a big bite out of its competition at the box office. Francesca Capucci reports on a band from Ireland now making big news here in the United States. The Lakers and the Mavericks stage a playoff battle at the Forum, and once upon a blue moon has arrived. All that, all the news right here at 11 o'clock tonight. We'll see you then. If you're a woman with a drinking problem or know someone who needs help, call Valley Women's Center for information. 818-716-7188. The new Mexi Melt. Cheese, beef, and pico sauce melted together. Go for it. Taco Bell has the road to make a ride for the border. A man who says he's beating AIDS. At nine. Oh, why should something be wrong? What's wrong? Sam found out. Hey. Is that a leg or is that a leg? <laughs> Honey, those vitamins are all a waste of time. My doctor says they go right through you. Heidi, honey. Hi. How'd your audition go? Oh, dumbass. Miss Max. Do you like ah! This is the ladies' dressing room. Oh, please, I'm beyond all that. Where's Max? You don't want to know. She's crazy today. I know. She's going to kill me. I kill you. See? What did I tell you? Not only did you just stand me up for that audition, I waited for you for 20 minutes in Times Square. I'm sorry. In that I... 20 minutes, I was asked to join a white slave ring, panhandled by six fake nuns, and propositioned by, I think, a rabbi, while all the time fending off a woman who insisted I was Marlo Thomas. Take a deep breath, honey. Wait! Oh, it gets better. Guess who I met on the subway on the way home? Fred. Fred, who stood me up all of last year, and guess who he was with? This is Fred. Who is all of 18, blonde, gorgeous, and had just gotten the part I had hoped to audition for. Sit down, honey. You sit down, Mrs. Memory. I am sitting. Oh. So, Fred tells Mrs. Fred that I'm a wonderful human being, right? Looks deep into my eyes and says, So tell me, Max, are you happy? I mean, really happy. I say, Fred, I am deliriously happy. I want to teach dance to talented newcomers like your wife and watch them have my career while I earn 200 a week, live in the same fifth floor walk-up, no heat, in fashionable Hell's Kitchen. Thank you for letting me share that with you, Mr. and Mrs. Fred. Is that all? No. So now, I mean, to soothe my nerves, I stop in at one of those old revival movie houses. You know the kind. They show nothing but old black and white movies when men and women fell in love because they danced together once, and one of them is secretly a millionaire, and both of them are clever and gorgeous and weigh about 30 pounds, you know, just like real life. But this particular movie was ridiculous. I mean, get this. She's a dance teacher, right? He's a klutz who turns out to be a prince. He takes her to a coffee shop for a hamburger. All of a sudden, she's in a sequin gown. He's dancing like a dream. There's champagne and caviar, and string quartet. And the happier they get, the more irritated I get. Because that could never happen to me, you know what I mean? My life is never going to be like that. You know something, I didn't even stay for the end. In fact, I came out of there feeling worse than when I went in. And guess what was waiting for me when I got home? What? A fan note from my landlord. 
informing me that unless I appear at his office by noon yesterday with a registered check for three months back rent, I would be evicted as of 12 noon today. It is now 12.03. Oh, look, is there anything I can do? Yeah, hey, you can make up the sofa bed. You've got a new roommate. Oh. oh, and another thing. Sam found out, and it was obviously you who told him. Told him what? That he was hopeless. Jerry, I got a message on the service saying today was his last class. Why would you want to hurt such a nice man's feelings? It's not his fault. He's got two left feet. I, that's not what I told him. Five, six, seven, eight, go! Get up, Miss Emily. I can't dance unless I look at my feet. Good, Ivy. Very good. <laughs> Too good. Sam. What are you doing, Sam? This is not the Little Bo Peep Dance Academy. You, take a break, all right? Ignore them, okay? Show me the shuffle. And. How's that, Miss Evans? That's better. Yes, yeah, much better, Sam. And please, it's just Max, okay? Max is no name for the beautiful woman. Sam, can I talk to you for a minute? Ooh. What is the matter with all of you? Look, if you're here to laugh, get out. If you're here to dance, Stay. Wait a minute. Jerry, what are you doing? We still have 20 minutes left. Heidi, I thought you were a serious person. Mrs. Emily. It's all right, darling. Huh? It's all right. I'm here. Who are you talking to? Jerry told me. Sam, I'm really sorry about that. Don't be sorry. That's glorious news. It is. I've been wanting to tell you the same thing for so long now. You have? Ever since our first lesson. Ever since I first saw you. There's no reason to get personal. I mean, I've been called a lot of things in my life, but never clumsy. Now, if you follow me to the office, I'll see about getting your money back. We don't have to pretend any longer. Jerry told me that you loved me. He what? He was supposed to tell you you were a klutz. I mean, you were uncoordinated. I mean, you weren't born to dance, but it, it doesn't matter because you're gorgeous. I mean, you're handsome, attractive. Oh, my God. And I love you, too, Maxine. And ever since that day, I have been in love with you. And when Jerry told me yesterday that you felt the same way, I finally knew what poetry meant. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. Let me get this straight. Shakespeare, 29th Sonnet. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Now you came to this country six months ago from a place I never heard of. Mbababwe. I can't even pronounce it. Mbababwe. Yeah. Your first day in New York City, you go to a revival movie house, sit right behind me and watch some dumb romantic musical. You're leaving out the best part. I fell in love with you. Yeah. You follow me to the dance studio. You sign up to take my tap class, just to be near me. I told you it was very simple. There's a name for people like you. I don't know what it is, but they usually end up on the front page of the Post. <laughs> All right, I'll confess. It was not just you. Oh, here it comes. When I was a little boy in Mbappe, I loved American movies. Whenever my father would visit this country, he would come back and he would tell me the stories of the movies he had seen. And I would close my eyes and try to imagine them. There were beautiful ladies and happy men and everybody was laughing and dancing. And I thought that my life could never be like that. This could never happen to me. And then one sweet afternoon, I opened my eyes, and there was you. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm out of poem. 
You know, the real world is going to seem frightfully dull after this. Frightfully dull? <laughs> you know, I don't feel like the real world right now. Would you like some champagne and caviar? I'm sure it's the house specialty. That and the meatloaf. <laughs> Waiter. Well, Dom Perignon, 1959. Not a bad year. Would Mademoiselle Maxine care for some onion with her caviar? Sure, why not? Look. What's going on here? Who is this guy? Would the lady prefer chopped egg with their caviar? The lady would prefer a straight answer. Yeah. How did... How did... My darling, it's just like in the movies. Yeah, but in the movies, it's not happening to me. Dance with me. Oh. What, right here beside the twirling desserts? What is this, an industrial? What are you afraid of? That piece of omelet on the floor. I'll catch you. No, you're a klutz, and besides, the, there's no music. Who are they? The Mbabwe String Quartet. Oh. Ask so many questions. Uh, oh. oh. I don't want to believe this is really happening. It is. No, I mean really happening to me. Be still and dance. Now it's my turn to teach you. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> okay. Fair is fair. It's been an amazing evening, but the sun is coming up, and you promised me you'd tell me who you are. Well, but first, let me tell you about Mbabwe. Population, 2,480,316. Area, 216.380 square miles. Primary export, peanuts and tungsten. Annual rainfall, 3.67 inches. Government, constitutional monarchy. Military forces, nil. Lost me on the tungsten. By the end of this year, I'll be king of Mbabwe. My father is stepping down. He says, it's my turn. So right now, you're looking at just another crown prince. It's come this January. I will be your majesty. Well, come right now. It's drop dead. But why? This has been the most glorious evening of my life. And I thought it was of mine, too. But the sun just came up. Oh, I should have guessed. That what? When I was Prince Samuel, next in line for the throne? How could you? No! That you were like all the rest. Just another con man. A liar. And on top of that, a nut. The Prince of Mug. I'm serious, Max. So am I. Listen, I can take your being a nut. I mean, this town is full of them. If you want to say you're the Prince of Persia, be my guest. Some nights I tell myself I'm Linda Evans. Who's Linda Evans? Shut up! You know what's unforgivable? What? To touch someone. To make them feel something. That something is finally happening in their lives. To make them want it, to dance. And then you take it all away. I, I really touched you, didn't I? I? I really made you feel something. Well, what do you think? But this is wonderful. It's horrible. Max, you love me, and I love you. You will come live with me and be my queen. Do you know where I can get a weapon? I'm going to shoot you. Max. Well. I, I would have asked you sooner, but uh, I thought this was just a, a one-night caprice for you. After all, what would you see in me? I'm just the future king of a very small country. We only have one theater there, and it only shows Rambo 1, 2, and 3. I never dreamt that you could ever be serious about someone like me. I just didn't want to get my feelings hurt. Your feelings? Listen, I live a nice, quiet, unhappy life. 
I did not need you to make me happy just to remind me of how unhappy I really am. Look, thank you very much, Your Majesty, Your Highness, Your Whateverness, and good night. Maxine, if you really believe in possibilities, if you really believe that something wonderful could happen, you will come with me to Mbabwe and be my queen. I know. My yacht leaves in four hours. Pier 22. Good night, Maxine Evans. Thank you for a perfect evening. It's been like a fairy tale. I could never live in a country that only has one movie theater. I'll build a cineplex. I'm the king! And I'm Maxine Evans, the hoofer! Goodbye, Sam! You are cleared for departure, Your Majesty. You really must be going. I thought she would come. Oh, my God, I can't go. What is it now? I forgot to water the plants. You got evicted, remember? I forgot my toothbrush. I knew you'd say that. I was scared. Either you go in that yacht with him or I will. Okay. I'm a flux, or that you lost me. What? Oh, your royal highness. <laughs> <laughs> Tune-ups? It's MasterCare Car Service. Great tune-ups with a computer that talks to your car. Finally, taking care of your car is no big deal. MasterCare Car Service by Firestone. I thought they just sold tires. Like I always tell my kids, where is it written that just because I'm a grandmother I have to look like a little old lady sitting in a rocking chair? <laughs> where is it written that because I'm a mother of six? I shouldn't look stunning. For one thing, I don't have to have dry skin. Dove contains one quarter moisturizing cream. It won't dry your face like soap. With Dove, my face feels smoother, not as dry. It feels fantastic. Just because I'm 50, I don't have to give up on my face. Why do you take aspirin more than once a week? I spend my days at a computer, so I get my share of headaches. I want fast relief, sometimes several days a week. But when I take aspirin that often, I get concerned about aspirin stomach upset. Well, now there's a new and better aspirin product for you. Try Buffered Bufferin. Better than plain aspirin, because it's 100% aspirin, plus three buffers to help protect against stomach upset aspirin can cause. That really is better. New Try Buffered Bufferin, if you take aspirin more than once a week. You know, you can change your life. It just takes a dream and the courage to make it happen. Becoming a blonde was an easy dream come true. And suddenly, I felt beautiful. Today, I choose Altress, the most luxurious hair color Clairol has ever made. Only Altress is a gel colorant. What a difference. And the color? Gorgeous. Live your dream. Be a beautiful brunette, fabulous blonde, or radiant redhead. Be the best you've ever been with Altress gel colorant. It's no big deal. Brake jobs? It's MasterCare car service. Premium brake jobs. Terrific warranty. Finally, taking care of your car is no big deal. MasterCare car service by Firestone. But I thought they just sold tires. Smuggling drugs. A missing brother. I don't know where to look anymore. Helping hands and breaking hearts. 
What do you want me to tell mom and dad? Tell them you didn't find me. Just another day at China Beach tomorrow. Peter Jennings on the summit. When the president of the United States and the leader of the Soviet Union sit down, there's nothing trivial about it. Peter Jennings from Moscow on World News Tonight. What's wrong? Why should something be wrong? What's wrong? Sam found out. Norma. How would you know that? He picks at his dinner, withdrawn and morose. He's quite disaffected whenever I'm close. I sit in the armchair, he bolts from the room. His face is a mirror of anguish and gloom. I'm home from the market, I call from the hall. Yet he's unresponsive, no answer at all. I'm home, Sam. It's me, Sam. When we go out walking, he's dead on his feet. He's vague and indifferent with people we meet. What's wrong, Sam? indication that proves he's on the trail it's been three days since I saw him wag his tail that damn dog I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm desperately sorry. But we really must discuss it. Norma, you make it sound as though we never have. Well, I know we have, but... But what? Norma, it's irreconcilable. I can't bear the dog, and the dog can't bear me. Perhaps in time. Norma, have you forgotten our history? Sam's and mine? The first time I came to call, my heart was filled with drums. My hair was filled with Vaseline. My fist was filled with mums. This was the evening together I'd been waiting for. I rang the bell. You opened the door. And all of a sudden, Sam was there, Sam was everywhere. At my ankles, my throat, my elbows, my chest, everywhere. I said, good boy, nice boy, please boy, down boy, sit. So he sat. Yes, he did. And he bit. Not even in my mother's eyes when I threatened to take my own apartment have I seen such hatred. You spanked him and put him out. You blamed it on the breed. We couldn't think what else to say, so we sat and watched me bleed. The second time I came to call, you locked him in the john. You said, all right, the coast is clear. Let's get this evening on. There was candlelight, music, champagne, the gentle sound of raindrops on the window pane. Then you went to get the caviar, and I heard nature's call. I said, I'll only be a sec, as I waltzed to the john down the hall. I opened the door, I switched on the light, and guess what? Sam was there, Sam was everywhere. At my ankles, my throat, my elbows, my chest, everywhere. I said, down boy, I'm your friend, I'm not a thief. 
But already I was mauled beyond belief Feeling a sunken bang there Seeing my wrist just hang there Rapidly losing sight I couldn't see through my right eye Waiting for the ambulance to arrive I knew somehow that if I should survive We never could continue this affair As long as Sam Well, then? We did start meeting here at, at your place, and that was the solution, wasn't it? Yes, for a while. Johnny, you love me, don't you? Yes, very much. And I've made you happy? Yes, very. Well, then, why couldn't we? I mean, why shouldn't we just continue the way we are? Because I want to marry you, that's why. I want to wake up every morning and find you there. I've not gone home to feed Sam or walk Sam or run Sam. But right there with me. But it's only a, a small inconvenience. I mean, having me go home, I mean. Terrific. So we have to maintain two separate apartments. One for us and one for Sam. Johnny, please, try to understand. I love Sam. He came along at a time when I needed him so. I know. Do you really know? Johnny, I never counted on you. I never thought I'd be that lucky. And before I met you... Do you know what it's like coming home to an empty room? Every night, an empty room. When nothing stirs, nothing breathes, nothing moves. And you start to believe that your life will go on that way. Every night, an empty room When nothing stirs, nothing breathes, nothing moves. So you buy yourself a friend. Imagine paying for a friend. Stirring, breathing, moving And it's easier then Strangely easier then Because it was late, Johnny It was very late gentle norma fair please don't leave me hanging there every vision i design rests on making norma mine norma sweet all my world would be complete with a healthy portion of norma Johnny gentle, Johnny grand, Johnny quick to understand. Every vision I hold dear rests on having Johnny near. Norma gentle, Norma sweet, all my world would be complete with a healthy portion of Norma. each other and we can make it work. Yes. Of course. But... But what? How? Well, darling, after we're married, I'll get you another dog. I love dogs. I really do. And they love me, too. Usually. I'll get you any kind you want, just as long as he doesn't want to kill me. <laughs> but... it wouldn't be Sam. No, it wouldn't be Sam. 
And what would happen to Sam? Oh, we'd give him away, just as we planned, to a lovely old couple in the country. I tried. And? There are no lovely old couples in the country. There have to be. The country is famous for lovely old couples. No, Johnny, no one. I even advertise, not one. He's not small, you see, or, or a puppy, or particularly easy to manage. I don't believe this. I cannot believe that a couple who are in love with each other would find that their only problem is a damn animal, a dog. I know it sounds silly, but to me it's real. It's very real. It's very real to me, too, I assure you. So are the stitches. Then what's to be done? Oh, Johnny, what's to be done? Well, Norma, there's really only one solution. What? You're going to have to have him... I mean, we'll find somebody to put him to... How could you say such a thing? How could you even think it? Because it's an answer. That's what you asked for, isn't it? Or maybe you don't really want an answer. Maybe Sam is just an excuse. For what? For trying to get rid of me. Maybe you don't love me at all, and that damn dog is just your way of getting out of it. Sam has nothing to do with it. Oh. Oh, so you do want to get out. No. Yes. Well, I could have made it a lot easier for you. All you had to do was tell me the truth and not involve that damn dog. Will you stop calling him that damn dog? No. No, 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 no. I will call him that damn dog until the day I die. Leave me alone. Just leave me alone. My pleasure. Well... It's, uh, it's all worked out very well, hasn't it? Yes, very well. I mean, if, if there are problems, it's best that we find them out now. We could have made a terrible mistake. Yes, actually, I'm relieved. Yes, so am I. Goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye, Norma. So, uh, I guess I'll see you around. Yes. I'm usually around. a cliche so why streak my mascara like that famous miss o'hara was over heard to say i'll think about that tomorrow tomorrow is an Well, Lord Miss O'Hara, 
big rat What a way I'll think about that tomorrow Thank heaven I've got tomorrow Tomorrow is at all day Presenting the delicately seasoned taste of Lipton noodles and sauce Alfredo. Delicately prepared for you by Lipton. So delicious. So simple. Noodles and sauce Alfredo. One of the Lipton side dishes with that delicately seasoned taste. It is no big deal. It's a hassle. Oh, it's called Master Care Car Service. Brakes, tune-ups. Alignments. No big deal. The mechanics are great. Eh? All their equipment, and swear they were technicians. And they stand behind their work six months or 6,000 miles. Master Care. You're covered from Maine to Missoula. These guys are so good. Fixing your car is no big deal. Finally, taking care of your car is no big deal. Master Care Car Service by Firestone. But I thought they just sold tires. Hi, I'm Gary Stoltz. This is a commercial for Surf, and this is my family. That's Dad, our hero. Uh, this way. He knows these hills like the back of his hand. There's Dad, working up a sweat. I like your color better. Come on, you guys, group photo, everyone. What's the smell? Surf can save Dad's shirt. It's a smelly job, but Surf's got to do it. Dad's shirt looks clean and smells clean enough for Whitney. Gary! There you have it. Surf removes dirt and odors. Human rights, nuclear testing, the future of Afghanistan. Stay on top of the summit agenda from Moscow as Good Morning America reports live from the Soviet Union this week. Liza Minnelli in Sam Found Out, a triple play. Brought to you by Surf, the detergent that removes both dirt and odors. With Surf, your clothes will come out looking clean and smelling clean. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you around. I'm usually around. Good night, everybody. Good night, Sam. I'm Ted Koppel. Later on Nightline, the crisis in Soviet Armenia. It spawned the most massive protests in Soviet history and poses a crucial test for Mikhail Gorbachev. Tomorrow at 9, can Harry Thor...